for work today and my father said, are they gonna let you wear that lamb hat? Really, are they gonna let you wear that? I work at a smoke shop, sir. Why can't, can somebody talk, is this cute? Do I look stupid? Let me know. What on God's green earth is this person wearing? I mean, the hair color, the eyeliner, the nose piercings, the, the everything about this person genuinely terrifies me to my core. But what is the point? A lamb hat? I get that Easter's right around the corner, but isn't it a little early to be putting something like that on? You know, I don't care where you work. You shouldn't be allowed to leave your house, okay? If you look like that, you shouldn't be allowed to leave your house. If I was president, I'd make a rule. This is me writing it down. If you look like this, you can't leave your house. You're scaring the children, you're scaring the people, and most importantly, you're terrifying beans. Welcome back to another episode of Society is Screwed. My name is Beans, you know, the person who's terrified by this person in this clip. And in the series, we take a look at some clips together and think to ourselves, huh, society is screwed. Now this clip definitely radiates society is screwed. You know, of all the clips we've ever seen, this one makes me feel like, hey, society is probably really screwed. The Lamb's father, we're gonna refer to this person as Papa Lamb. Papa Lamb brings up a really good point here. I'm not sure that I'd let my employees wear a lamb hat like that, but then again, even without the lamb hat, I wouldn't hire this person. Even if the labor was free, even if they were paying me. And honestly, I'm sorry that you had to watch that clip too, but I had to see it and I struggled with the pain. So now you have to too. It's hard to believe that people like this really exist on the planet. Speaking of people that I find hard to believe actually exist on the planet. Before we get into things, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We got episodes coming out all the time. Thank you for all the support. I really appreciate it. $50 minimum wage. If you think it's impossible, let me tell you right now, Barbara Lee has just introduced this policy into the Senate in California. She is running to be California's senator, and we will be voting for her. She is the only person running. She's running against Adam Schiff and Katie Porter to support a ceasefire unequivocally, ceasefire from day one, free Palestine from day one, and now she just introduced $50 minimum wage. She is my girl because she is pushing the overtone window in the correct direction. And of course, the media is already painting her as like, ooh, is she too far left? Like, is she going to make it? She'll make it if we vote for her. I am so sick and tired of neutral, lukewarm Democrats running off of like their sadness over Trump and basically nothing else. I want a spitfire black woman from Oakland to come out guns blazing with $50 minimum wage because that is what we need to survive. Let's start the conversation there. Let's start the conversation at $50 minimum wage, and then maybe we can back it up if you have something better to offer. Anyway, Californians, March 5th is our election. Do not forget to vote for Barbara Lee. Oh my God, I'm such a dumb bitch. You know, I literally just commented to somebody saying I'm really sorry that I've been swearing so much, but that one just felt really prime. I'm trying to work on that though, less swearing. But I mean, in this instance, come on. Come on, how come all valley girls sound like that? They're all, oh my God, and that's my girly. And free Palestine, oh my God, Palestine, free it, free it, oh my God. And speaking of things that are free, something that's not free, $50 minimum wage. Are you telling me that we can't afford a $50 minimum wage? <laughs> There's literally a rock where my brain's supposed to be. I want a real spitfire black woman whose guns are blazing, which kind of sounded really racist, but we're going to skim over that. Every day I have four cups of Starbucks coffee, and then I drink out of my Stanley cup. I take four Xanaxes, three Adderalls, and then at night I take some Ambien to really knock me out. I have low self-esteem. I get wasted seven days a week. I don't really have any friends, but I act like a whore, so I think some people like me. Okay, I think I'm done with my impersonation of her. A $50 minimum wage, for those of you who don't know, is a awful idea. Basic Economics 101. Raising the minimum wage to $50 does not solve any problems. It only makes the problem worse. Your dollar becomes worth less. You know, maybe we let California just become its own country. We let the liberals take over, ruin it, 
and then we don't let him back into the rest of the United States. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comments. But speaking of dumb valley girls. Respectfully, you look like you're pushing 45. Stop getting filler or Botox, whatever you have. It looks so bad. True. 45? I get like, okay, maybe like late 20s, 30s. 22, yeah, shocker. When I first started TikTok and started making filler videos, like come get filler with me or Botox, I used to get these hate comments all the time. There's just people on TikTok that absolutely hate cosmetic procedures and believe that you shouldn't get them. And again, I think it's a personal preference. Like if I want to get filler, I feel like no one should stop you from getting filler because it's your own face. But people always told me that I look older and I get it. I look older. I might act older. Um, but 45? And before I used to cry over these comments and used to delete them and block the account. But now I'm just like... I just laugh at it because I know it's not true. <laughs> um, but I do respect your opinion. You know, I genuinely feel bad for this girl. I would have loved to see a before and after photo for the amount of work that's been done in her face, but you can clearly tell there's been a lot of work done here. You just got the, the look. There's the certain look and it looks exactly like that. To me, it looks like that this woman is coping. She's coping very hard with the fact that she's kind of ruined her body to meet a false beauty standard that's only exists on TikTok and Instagram. I think that this woman does look like she's in her 40s, but she's claiming that she's only 22. I find that really hard to believe. Also, it's not really an opinion whether or not doing this is good or bad for you. It's pretty objectively bad for you. It's bad for your own self-image. It's bad for society because the more people see famous people on the internet doing this kind of thing, influences less famous people to think that they need to do this kind of thing to meet those standards. It creates a self-perpetuating cycle of self-hatred, people not being able to meet body images. I mean, it's really, really a brutal and vicious cycle. I know I just went from making fun of a valley girl to being pretty sympathetic to this woman, but, you know, this woman isn't talking about getting $50 minimum wage. And to me, it looks like this woman's clearly trying to cope in this video. She mentions how the comments used to make her cry and now it doesn't make her cry. It's not that those things still don't hurt her. It's just she's become more numb to it because more and people say that kind of stuff to her. That stuff still really hurts her, but she has to create a self-containing bubble where she's convinced herself that this is okay. I am okay with the poor decisions I've made. Instead of taking a metaphorical look in the mirror, because I'm sure she looks at herself quite often, and saying, hey, Maybe I could try to influence people to not make the same mistakes that I did because I'm 22, I look like I'm 45, and this wasn't a healthy decision I made. Speaking of people being unhealthy, here's somebody that's not mentally healthy. From people, I spent most of my life feeling like I'm a man, but then I realized, what if I'm not a man? I just don't like being a woman, but then... I realize I'm just experiencing intense dysphoria from people assigning me traits and roles based on my genitals, but then kind of wanted to come out as non-binary, but I kind of felt weird about it because I was like, I don't know if I actually care what people refer to me as. And plus I know that people are going to assign me the role of woman regardless of how I identify. But then I realized that gender just isn't an important aspect of my identity. And if people perceive me as woman, Oh well, because like the title woman doesn't actually mean anything. And the popular understandings of gender are deeply intertwined with white supremacist and patriarchal ideas that I cannot escape alone and must help dismantle. The story of how I went from constantly obsessing over and getting nauseated about perceptions of my physical form to only sometimes doing that. And the story of why it's wild watching other white gender non-conforming people refuse to participate in any effort towards liberation outside of making sure that they specifically are not perceived incorrectly. I spent a What do you... What do you want me to say to that? It's very clear that this person needs some mental help. Very confused person. 
But man, this person's really annoying. I don't know what it is exactly, but I think it's a mix of her tone of voice shifting back and forth. But then, and then, but then, and it's rooted in white supremacy. I get it, okay? Everything's rooted in white supremacy. I get it, all right? We don't even really know what a woman is. It's rooted in white supremacy. You just don't, you know, that's why I'm so confused because the white supremacists, they're the ones that's, they're the ones that are really confusing me. You know, those dang clan members, I see them all the time and they're just up there being like, woman means this and man means this. And then they, they spin a magic dial and then it just confuses my little peanut sized brain. The KKK's at it again. I mean, those, those crafty people. All right, so imagine thinking that white supremacy is a problem for your inability to decide whether or not you're a man or a woman. And then remembering that white supremacists believe in protecting women and children, and the last thing that they would do is probably want to confuse white women. Do you really think that white supremacists would want young white women to be confused about their gender, to be hyper-liberal? You know, I feel like nobody talks about that enough, but if the white supremacists were really at it, and they had all the power and control, don't you think they'd be doing a better job? I do. I think that they'd be doing a better job if they had all the power and control and they were puppeteering society. Anyways, that's all I got in me for this video. Thank you for watching another episode of Society is Screwed. My name is Beans. Thank you for watching The Daily Beans. Have a blessed day.